Hello, hello, hello. You get glitter stitches and I get glitter stitches and our projects get glitter stitches. I'm the Knitting Fairy Godmother and today is Ask a Knitting Fairy Godmother and we're going to talk about color work. So go get your project so you can knit along while I talk and while you get your project, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my newsletter. It's actually a knit letter because we don't talk about anything except knitting. And um, I deliver glitter stitches and knitting things to your inbox once a week. So if you would like to join us, you can sign up at knittingfairygodmother.com under newsletter. Okay, now you've had your project and we're going to talk about color work. And I have lots of things to show and share for you today. I want to start by defining color work. So sometimes we have knitting that uses different colors and then there are the specific techniques that combine colors and I'll talk about both of them. So this is a broad color work shawl. I call it broad because this shawl, you can see that there is a rainbow section and a black section. So we're using there's section of black and section of rainbow petals, and it uses two colors. So even though we're using two different colors of yarn, this is just what I would consider knitting with different colors. Because it's in garter stitch, the front and the back are virtually the same. So this is a broad way to combine colors to make shapes in what you knit. I would consider um, any project that combines more than one color knitting with color, period, as a definition. Now we can get into the more nuanced, the more um, detailed names of things, of knit projects with color. So there's three main color work techniques. The first color work technique is intarsia. The second color work technique is stranded knitting and the third color work technique is mosaic or slip stitch. So I have examples of everything. Um, intarsia you may be familiar with from the woodworking realm. I know that there are woodworking skills that combine intarsia and I think of intarsia like stained glass where we're putting specific pieces of color in a to make a picture right we're putting specific drops of color to make a picture the most iconic intarsia motif is i have a commercially produced argyle sock so there's three colors in this sock we have the mid green the light green the dark green and then the white contrast um diamond right the in intarsia is using cut colors. So each part, each color that you see is its own bobbin. And even in intarsia, we use multiple bobbins of the same color. So you may be using across any row, multiple colors and multiple strands of yarn. Usually intarsia is knit flat because that's easier to manage and then it's seamed. You can knit in the round, but I would consider intarsia in the round an advanced skill. Even the intarsia socks usually have a seam going up the cuff. So one way that you can tell that something is intarsia is when you look on the inside and you can see that there are lots of ends. You can see that this sock has lots of ends that need to be woven in. And obviously that is not what your hand knit item would look like, but looking on the inside of something is one way, a clue um, to do some research about how that item is made. Again, this is a commercially produced sock in the most common intarsia motif, the argyle. The next color um, technique is stranded. So this is another commercially produced sock. You can see that this sock has three colors. We have the navy, 
the light blue, and the white. If we look very closely, we can tell that every row or round of the sock only has two colors. So at the very top of this snowflake motif, it uses light blue and white. And then around here, it switches to white and navy. And then as we go down, we're back in the blue, the light blue and the white section. Fair, um, stranded knitting is generally knit in the round and it usually has motifs, simple motifs like snowflakes, flowers, um, hearts and petals. Sometimes there's more than two colors per round, but that's very specific. And um, you knit this technique holding two strands of yarn per every single round. So you're creating a very warm fabric. This particular technique is known to come from the very northern parts of the world in Scandinavia. And there are even branches of um, stranded knitting that get into more detailed regions of Scandinavia, but the correct term for this type of knitting as a generic name is stranded knitting. And there are traditions that go along with how you make that. So another clue is when you look on the inside, you can see the shadow of the motif. So you can see that there's little floats and that the shadow of the flower is in the back. It's hard to see on this commercially produced sock. And I want to show you a little bit more on a hat that I made. So this hat is a two color stranded hat. And when we look on again, I'm only using two colors per row. But when we look on the inside, you can see all of the floats. So there's the shadow of the checkerboard on the inside. And then each of these um, white pieces, that loop or loose piece of yarn going across is called a float. And that's how you know that it's a stranded technique. Okay, the last technique is called mosaic or slip stitch knitting. And this is, there's a couple different iterations. This is a cowl. The slip stitch or mosaic technique, again, is only knit um, one color, one active color. So when you're doing the mosaic or the slip stitch, you only have to focus on using one color at a time. The colors don't get cut, so you don't have the ends to weave in. And the color, you alternate colors every other round, and then the the resting color just gets pulled up the side of the work. This technique can be used, um, this is the inside, the wrong side of the cowl. So you can use this technique flat or in the round. This particular cowl was knit flat and then seamed to make a circle. One more thing I want to show you. So the little, I call these little berries, and that's not the official term, but the pattern will tell you which stitches to knit and which stitches to slip, which gives you the contrast both in texture and color. Um, mosaic combines knitting and purling and color work, which is something else that I didn't mention. For the most part, the um, stranded color work is knit in the round, which creates a stockinette fabric. And the intarsia is usually knit flat and seamed. Again, usually in stockinette, we don't often see intarsia in garter stitch, but it's possible. The last um, show and share that I have is the Ribs and Arrows shawl. By Benjamin Matthews and this is another this is the mosaic panel at the bottom you can tell because it has geometric shapes and there's only one color per row being actively knit with so you knit with one color across and back and then you switch your knitting and the old active color becomes the resting color you pick up 
the resting color and then knit across. And this is just another type of slip stitch pattern or motif that you can um, use when you're using mosaic knitting. So that is a broad overview of the three major color work techniques. Intarsia, um, slip stitching or mosaic and stranded knitting. So until we talk next week, keep knitting. And if you have any questions for the Knitting Fairy Godmother, I would be happy to answer them. Just um, write your comment below, or if you're shy, then you can just send me a quick DM and I'll keep you anonymous and confidential and it'll be our secret. So I'll see you next week. Bye.